One Senate race has gotten national attention because it's close and features a candidate with a famous political legacy, Congressman Joe Kennedy III. He's attempting an unseat Massachusetts Senator Ed Markey. So while the te two seem to have some similar policy views, Kennedy has stressed the need for younger leadership representing Massachusetts. In a recent magazine profile, he said, quote, with due respect to Senator Markey, who is a good man, there's more to this job than the way you vote and the bills you file. Mm. Hmm, interesting. Joining us to expand on the dynamics of this race, friend of the show and the Intercepts DC Bureau Chief, Ryan Grimm. Great to see you, Ryan. Good to see you guys. Mm. So what is the case that, so this is a Democratic primary, obviously. Um, you know, Markey is very liberal. He's very in step with sort of the electorate there. Um, there's not a clear distinction that Joe Kennedy seems to be making on a policy front. So what is he actually running on here? Wait, Massachusetts is one of those, because it's uh, in a lot of ways a one-party state, even though they often elect Republican governors. It's very much a wait your turn kind of place. And Kennedy realized that, you know, he had a shot that if he jumped in this time, that he might not have to wait, wait his turn. Uh, Ed, Ed Markey is, you know, not a not an I, I, icon in Massachusetts, you know, to, uh -huh. to put it, to put it gently. He's he's what everybody would call kind of a fine member of Congress. Um, he's had some bad votes. He voted. Uh, he 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 didn't think the war in Iraq was a good idea, but he voted for it anyway out of uh, out of you know p political c uh, considerations. Uh, but you know, in general, he's been a very strong progressive liberal senator from uh, a congressman and then senator from Massachusetts. And Kennedy kind of just saw his shot, and I think that's where a lot of resentment is coming um, at at his bid, and because it's, there's a lot of what what's your what's your point here. Right. Okay, yes, it's true that you are a younger man than the older man. Um, <laughs> your last name is Kennedy. Good you know, congratulations for that. But be, beyond that, you know what are what are you really bringing to the table? But for a lot of voters, it, it doesn't matter. You know the name the name Kennedy uh, obviously has a storied legacy in in Massachusetts and could end up being enough to to put him over the uh, top in the primary. Yeah, I mean, Ryan's polling is very scant in this race, but as far as I can tell, Kennedy is doing quite well um, in this special election. One of the more interesting dynamics, I think, is that Markey, you know, despite his age and all this, is getting, I think, prominent endorsements and backing from people like AOC and much of the left because of his sponsorship or maybe his introduction of the Green New Deal. Can you explore that dynamic for yeah. us a little bit? Yeah, and you're right. The polls are showing Kennedy ahead. There aren't many polls. Uh, Kennedy has a lot of money to spend and he's already spending it. He's about, he's going up on television, uh, very, you know, which is very early, but you're right. So Markey kind of, uh, became a cause celeb for the young left when he was willing to be the, the, the Senator that would introduce the green new deal on that, on that side of cap of Capitol Hill. And so he announced it, you know, with AOC, uh, you know, in a, in a press conference that then launched it from there in, into the presidential campaign where, you know, for a long time, you, you basically had to say you were supporting the Green New Deal in order to run for uh, in order to run for president. And so when people say, wait a minute. So the, the one senator who was you know, who was willing to step forward and, and be the guy who, who carries the, the Green New Deal resolution, he's the one that's that's going to get primaried when. You know, the, the Senate is uh, full of people who haven't been uh, meeting what what people uh, expect of them. And so, you know, there's a lot of anger and frustration there from the groups like the, the Sunrise Movement, which have endorsed Ed Markey from people like AOC, who've, who've also endorsed him. Uh, but, you know, it's it's not it's not clear if if that's going to be enough uh, to to put him over the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ryan, I'm old enough to remember when the Democratic establishment freaked down about any primaries of their incumbents. They seem less freaked down about this one. Um, what has their stance been on the race? So th at least the, the DSCC this cycle uh, ke kept their anti-incumbent policy, uh, you know, out of print in, in unlike the DCCC, you know, the, the party establishment has always made it clear that look if if you're an incumbent in good standing and in good standing is is a, a crucial qualifier there then we don't support 
primary is against you. Now, the DCCC put that in writing, put it on its website and and started implementing policies around blacklisting consultants who violate that policy. The DSCC, which runs Senate campaigns, wasn't dumb enough to actually put that in into print. So they don't so they don't have uh, a, a policy in print that that people can point to as as hypothetical. Uh, you know, certainly Markey's getting support in general from his his colleagues. Uh, but you're right. There is there isn't there isn't a a huge kind of, uh, you know, upswell of uh, opposition to the to the idea of of Kennedy taking him on. It's more like, well, it's happening. You know, let these guys fight it out. <laughs> well, very interesting dynamics there. All right, Ryan, thank you for joining us, man. Appreciate it. You, you got it. Yeah. We'll have more rising for you after this.